Greetings YouTube. I'm going to be working on a one-handed axe and I'm going to be using this 7-inch saw blade to accomplish this. So here I have a piece of um, flat iron. This is, what the heck is this? This is uh, one and a quarter by three sixteenths by 36 inches. And I'm just going to cut this in half to give me roughly two pieces, um, 18 inches long. And I'm going to be drilling five holes, two holes for here, um, one for the center and one for this, and that'll keep it from rotating. And I'm just going to drill holes for that size. It don't, doesn't matter that that size, that hole is larger. In fact, it gives me a little wiggle room in case I don't have them perfectly centered. And then I'm going to put two holes further down to hold the lower section on uh, t together. And I'm going to be using some spacers. I've got some washers kicking around. I'm going to use some washers in there to space them because this is about a hundred thousandths of an inch thick. So I need to make up about a hundred thousandths of an inch spacers to, to make it even because I don't want to pinch. I don't want to pinch that with the metal. Um, and I'm going to try something I haven't tried in many, many years. I was watching a video here on YouTube and someone had used regular old uh, nails to make rivets. So they cut the rivet, they cut the nail down, and then they used uh, a ball peen hammer to peen over one side to make a functioning rivet. So I've got four nails here, which I'll be using to create uh, four rivets. Uh, I, my ball peen hammer though is only 14 ounces, so I'm go probably going to do some of the beginning work with a uh, an engineering hammer, which is 48 ounces, and then I'll do the actual peening with the uh, ball peen hammer. And then I'm also going to drill one hole at the end for a lanyard. Uh, so the next step is going to be to saw this in half and drill some holes, and I may be able to get that done today. It's the sun's starting to go down. Um, and I may have to do the riveting tomorrow when it's I got more daylight because uh, I actually think I may try to shoot some of the riveting process for the for the video. So we'll see. Um, so the next step up is to mark the uh, the uh, metal and whack it in half. Alrighty, so I've drilled four holes. I have shelved the lanyard hole idea because these things did not line up perfectly. So I was not going to be able to get the lanyard hole be, to be correct. And I don't want a huge hole. So we're just going to go without a lanyard hole. And uh, if I eventually want to, maybe I will wrap this in paragord and put a loop in at the end um, if I decide to do that. Otherwise, it's just going to stay like this. I may just use sticky tape on it just by some, you know, uh, racket tape or something to wrap around this thing to give it a little more comfort. Um, but again, this is this is just for fun. And this is, I actually don't actually think I'm going to have to use this thing for anything serious. It's just kind of give, doing the whole post-apocalyptic um, axe vibe thing, which I kind of enjoy. So I got those done. Um, I did not burr the hole, deburr the holes, because again, I'm going to be um, making rivets out of these things. So I figured it really didn't matter a whole lot. Um, they're slightly deeper, so it's slightly rough because I'm going to be covering them up with a, a rivet. So there you go. Um, so tomorrow is going to hopefully be making rivets if that works. And if it doesn't, I'll fall back onto getting myself some, scrounging up some bolts and nuts and doing that way. Either way, it'll work. I just think it would be neat and interesting to try rivets because I haven't done rivets in 38 years. So <laughs> that's a really long time. So there you have it, folks. Um, the first couple of stages of planning and then the cutting and drilling of the holes in this current project of a small one-handed post-apocalyptic style axe. Alrighty, we are outside, so forgive any noise that you hear, such as cars and crows. Um, and I have this set up roughly the way I want to work. The first um, rivet I'm going to try to put in is going to be this one here, because this is the more exacting of the two locations. That one I have more wiggle room because it's a larger hole. So it's going to be left to, to the second. And then I will do the two at the end here. Um, and I have spacers in so between these two strips of metal. Um, I have them taped in place with some blue uh, painter's tape. The piece on one will be permanent and part of the piece of the other will be permanent. I don't care if it's inside. It won't matter. So my first goal here is to use the engineer hammer, the larger of the two hammers, the, the, uh, the, the one with the dark brown hammer handle, to try to mushroom that down a little and if that succeeds I will then use the ball peen hammer to try to peen over um, 
that mushroom until I have a functioning uh, rivet. So we are now going to give this a shot. And remember, please, I haven't done any riveting since I was 12. And that is not cutting it. It's not big enough. It's not big enough. Nope. It's not going to work. Not going to work. I can't mushroom it enough before it begins to move on me. I can't make it the width of the head, which is, you know, significantly. I'm not going to show you what the width of the head is. Give me a second. I got another one in my pocket. I can't make it that size. Um, quickly enough. So it looks like I'm going to have to go with a nut and bolt uh, solution, which was not my ideal, but you know, sometimes you can't have all you want. So, as I've shown in videos in the past, sometimes things don't work out the way you want them to. So now I have to get that freaking thing out of there, which is going to be a job in and of itself. Um, and uh, once I've accomplished that, then I'll have to stop by a hardware store today and pick up some nuts and bolts of the right size. Which is unfortunate, but, you know, live and learn. I'll see if I can poke around upstairs. Maybe I can fi find something in my collection I already got. We'll see. Alright, so nuts and bolts are next. Alright, thanks to the uh, handy dandy Dremel tool, I was able to disassemble that uh, that failed a rivet because one side of the one side of the thing just popped right off, but the other side had to go through that hole, which is smaller, and it wouldn't. So I had to cut the nail off. Um, I see. I, I should have drilled the hole closer to this, I think, but at the time I didn't think the drill bit was going to give me enough clearance. I was wrong on that. So now we have to go do see if I can find a a bolt that will fit through there. All right, I have returned with the requisite items. I have nuts and bolts, and I had washers, both flat washers and lock washers already here. And I have a wrench and a screwdriver, because these are both Phillips and flathead type machine screws. And now it's just going to be the assembly process. And there we go, folks. I didn't even need the washers. I thought I would because I didn't know if the bolts were going to be quite the right length and I didn't want to have any uh, any of the bolts sticking out from the other side, but you turn it over and they are perfectly flush. That one sticks out so small amount that I'm not going to be concerned with it because that's the thinnest part because I set the other spacers up for the width of the carbide tips. So these spacers between these sections are a smidge thicker than the center here, which is a little thinner because you want to have the body of the blade to be a little thinner than the teeth themselves so that you don't get binding. So this right here is bowing in very, very slightly as opposed to here. But again, it's it's very small amount. Like 64 of an inch baby. Um, I'm quite pleased with it. Came out nice. It's got a nice heft to it. I may wrap this. I haven't decided yet. It's got a nice primitive look, which that's really what I'm going for here. Um, that whole post-apocalyptic vibe. And I think I'm going to get my wife to take a still picture of, me, of, of the axe and me together so I can post it at the end of the video.